so today's session uh, is uh, basically on CSS. We are going to learn CSS. We are going to see how CSS can be written. What are some fundamentals about CSS? And uh, uh, we will see some samples about it. Okay. Uh, so let's start. Uh, today's agenda would be to cover lots of stuffs, but those are uh, very quick and very easy to understand. So we will uh, quickly go over to one by one. Uh, first thing first, so we will understand what is CSS. Then we will see what are various selectors available in uh, CSS. We will see how CSS can be applied to the HTML. Then we will see some of the properties of CSS, um, some of uh, important properties of CSS. Uh, we will uh, also understand a concept called specificity uh, in CSS uh, that is uh, quite useful to understand. Uh, and then last part would be to understand the media queries. So we'll go one by one with the examples. Uh, before to that, we will uh, quickly cover some fundamentals. So we. I think almost all knows what is CSS. Basically, CSS stands for cast cascading style sheets. The, uh, the current version of CSS is CSS3. Okay, and CSS, why CSS is uh, uh, you know uh, introduced to increase the user experience across websites. So normal behavior, the default uh, the default behavior of uh, HTML pages. Uh, are not that good. So when you use your normal HTML elements and when you build the website through that, it doesn't give good look and feel. It doesn't give good uh, user experience too. So then CSS came into the picture and it gave a, quite a good styling to the components, various HTML components. Okay, So that's why CSS is there. CSS is now, uh, you can say, <clears throat> every website cannot be completed without CSS. So it has to have CSS. Most of the time, people use some or other UI framework like Bootstrap, Foundation, Onsen, uh, Kendo, and all. But uh, from the ground, it's it's still using CSS. There are CSS, and people uses it to customize here and there. Okay, so CSS is very important in website. It uh, to actually build good user interface and actually provide good user experience in your website. Now. Um, what is the syntax of CSS? So CSS syntax is quite simple. So uh, what I'll do, I'll, I'll delete all the content because we are going to create it once again. OK. So what is the CSS syntax? CSS syntax is very simple. You have first thing first, you have selectors. OK. Then uh, after selectors, you have a curly braces. And inside that, you are having a key and value pair. OK? You are having key and value pair. So uh, this is a normal CSS syntax. What is the key? It's basically your CSS property. And value is nothing but actual value. So maybe if I give you the example of this, let's say I want my paragraph color, font color to be red. So what I'll do, I'll select this. So I'll, I'll speak about selectors more. But just uh, consider this example as just a sample of what can be key value. So I have a selector as P. My property may be color. And then I may have a value as, let's say, red. This is a simple CSS. OK? So this is the syntax of CSS. You have selectors. Then inside that, selectors are basically used to pick up the HTML element on which you want to provide the styling. So what is the use of selectors? Selectors are basically used to pick up the HTML element onto which you want to apply the styling. Now, which styling? The styling which you mentioned between curly braces. So this particular styling will be applied to this selector. This selector will pick up one of the element or multiple elements and apply this styling onto that. OK? So if I have a paragraph, F3. 
So I have a paragraph like this. And if I open it into the browser, uh, what is the problem? So one question here, how do you, from Sublime Text, how do you make the code run in the browser? Uh, so there is right click and uh, open uh, in browser, but that opens in IE and I don't like it. And I tried to change it to Chrome, but it didn't work. So I am okay. just uh, opening it from the folder itself. Oh, okay, fine. Now here uh, you see the uh, output is not coming because the CSS is not included in HTML. Okay. So when you write the CSS file, it needs to be included in your HTML file. So there are various ways to include HTML, uh, include CSS into your HTML. So very first way is you apply the style inline. This is called inline uh, styling. So you mention style attribute on the HTML element, and then you basically apply styling here. Okay. So if I now refresh it, you will see the color of the font has been changed to red, right? This is called inline styling. Okay. Now, if I don't want inline styling, I can have embedded uh, embedded CSS as well. What is embedded CSS? Embedded CSS means you write your CSS into head itself. Okay. So what you do is you put a script. Probably you do not need to write even this. You can simply say P. Uh, I forgot the syntax. Yeah, it, it goes on inside style. Right. It's not. It doesn't go inside script. It goes inside style. So this is embedded CSS. So here you can write P, and then you can say color red. Now people generally use uh, doesn't use this. Uh, most of the time because uh, and that's why I keep forgetting syntax about embedded uh, styling. Um, why? Because most of the time uh, you want to create CSS file and you want to share across your application, right? So embedded CSS are always uh, uh, the scope of the embedded CSS is only for that HTML. So it is not reusable. When you write CSS into some external file, it's, it's, it can be shared across various HTML and then the reusability come into the picture, right? So this is embedded style of writing CSS. Now if I remove this styling and if I uh, run it, still the color is red because this embedded styling is getting applied. Now let's say I don't want embedded styling uh, embedded styling is useful only in case you have very small amount of CSS. Let's say 5, 10, 15, 20 lines of CSS, you can have embedded uh, CSS into your uh, HTML. So how you write? You write style tag, and then inside the style tag, you put all your CSS. Okay. Another way of uh, that's widely used is to have the external CSS included into the HTML. That is called external CSS. So we write the link tag. And inside link, we actually provide our CSS file path. So our CSS is session3.css. OK, so what I was saying is you can have uh, the style sheet included into your HTML using link tag. So that link tag goes inside head of HTML, basically inside the head tag. And then you mention the path. So this path is again, you can mention relative or absolute path right here. I have this CSS into the same folder. So I have, uh, I haven't mentioned any um, extra slashes or like that. Now, uh, in our CSS file, if you see, we still have color red. So I will save it and I will try to uh, refresh it. Uh, hmm. Red. 
session three dot CSS. Yeah. So uh, this is called um, embedded CSS. So three ways of applying CSS onto HTML element. One way, is, one way is inline CSS, where you mention the CSS within the tag itself. Second is to have the embedded, CS, uh, embedded CSS, where you mention all your CSS components into style tag. And third way, which is the preferred way, most of the time you use this, is called external, including external CSS. So we have a CSS file and we have included it. Now, uh, let's, understand which one is so what is the cascading order of all these three right so when you have a css for single element inline css external css as well as your uh, embedded css which one will be applied so let's say my external css has color red in my embedded CSS, I mentioned uh, color as um, blue. And then inline CSS, I mentioned uh, style uh, color is uh, probably green. OK. So what I did is I have CSS on same element for this P tag. So this is basically a selector, right? So this is called tag selector. So we will speak about selectors, but at this point of time, just underst understand this. This CSS is embedded CSS. This CSS is inline, in inline CSS, and I have external CSS as well. I have included external CSS into my HTML. Now, I am applying the CSS on this P tag. So when this, once this P tag gets displayed onto the screen, which style should apply? So let's see it. OK. So now I'm getting green. It means inline CSS is the highest cascading order. It means whenever you have inline CSS for some element, all other CSS will be override by inline CSS. Now if I remove it, I remove inline CSS, then if I run it, you see color is getting as red. From where it is coming? It is coming from external CSS. Okay. But if I put this into here, and if I run it now, what you see is basically blue tag. Why? Because inline CSS has the ca highest cascading order from the embedded CSS and external CSS, whichever comes last has the highest order. So because previously I had this CSS included below to this embedded CSS, that last part became red and that's why that color applied to our paragraph but now what i did i put that external css on top and that's why this particular piece of code is overriding this piece of code and that's why you are seeing color as blue so inline css has the highest priority after that whoever comes first whoever comes first gets override by all other css code for the comes last Whoever, so basically, whoever comes last gets applied. Whoever comes first gets overridden by all preceding code. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, so this is about cascading order. We are doing cascading um, orders in terms of what is what comes first. So inline CSS always comes first. Better part, whoever is last is applied onto that particular element. Now we need to understand the selectors. So we have just taken this particular sample uh, in case of uh, explaining this, but we need to understand the selectors uh, in detail. So how many types of uh, selectors are there in CSS? There are various types of selectors are there in CSS. 
first and foremost is tag based selector another is um, class based selector and the last one is id based selector and there are fourth one as well which is called the universal selector these are four selectors in css okay so you can select one of the element using one of this selector so you can select an element using tag selector or class selector or id selector or universal selector so we will see uh, every in detail universal selector is like this you apply star and then you apply styling it means this styling gets applied to each and every component of html that is called universal selector so let's say your entire page needs to have some color as um, so your entire page needs to have all the font color to be blue so you can simply put color blue here and it will apply to all the html elements so this is called universal selectors generally some basic stuff like color or um, uh, you know some basic uh, um, basic configuration kind of styling which you generally do can be applied using universal selectors otherwise you generally prefer all other selectors universal selectors because universal selectors whatever you write here applies to all the html element so that's not always um, expected right so we generally use other selectors more than universal selector so this is how right how you write universal selector now tag selector we already know so p tag and then the styling so this is a tag selector very simple okay um, after that comes class selector so you can create a class now why class is useful when you create a class in css you create a reusable component so how you create a class in css using dot let's say my class and then you apply some styling here now wherever you apply this my class on any html element will be having color blue so in your html your p can have a class is equal to my class here another uh, html element probably span have a class as my class so what you did you basically created a reusable component so what does the span element do it's html simple html element uh, you can put content inside a span so it's a uh, it, it is what it is horizontally stacked elements it doesn't do li it doesn't give you line break like paragraph and uh, it's a simple html uh, element only okay so okay i got it so in, if you want to avoid the line break you use uh, span instead of uh, p yeah okay thanks yeah so uh, this is how you apply a class styling to html elements class styling is always useful when you create a reusable component so you want to have a, uh, a similar styling between four or five components you can create a class and then apply that class using class attribute in html and then that styling would be applied so class is a reusable component so this is called a class selector now next thing is a id selector so each and every html element may or may not have id so i i can have id as one here i can have uh, id two here like this so each and each, each and every html element you can give id to it and now you can create that css for that particular id so how you retrieve the HTML element using ID selector using hash, and then you say one, and then you say like this. So probably this is not the right way of doing this. Probably PID and here SID, and here you mentioned PID, and then you mentioned the style color blue. 
okay so this is how you apply uh, styling based on um, id id selector okay so now we understood the selectors how many selectors four selectors are there tag based id based class based and the universal selector okay now what is the cascading order of this so there has to be a cascading order right so if i apply color blue to pid then i apply even this so i have a color green here and then i have a, a class based selector as well where i will say my class and i will say color as green or probably red and then yes so i have id i have a tag and i have a class right so if i put some inline style here definitely it will be applied so inline styling has the highest cascading effect so inline styling will always have the first priority now i have the id as well and i have the class as well and then i have a tag as well so i have three selectors doing the same styling on the same element so what should now be applied when we refresh the page so if you see id selector has the highest priority id selector has the highest priority if i remove it so this is how you comment in your css okay uh, slash forward slash asterisk and then you close it with asterisk and forward slash so now i have removed the id selector now if i refresh it the color is red so first is id selector second is class selector and the third is tag selector so this is the cascading order of how you do how uh, the priority is applied to your selector so id selector is highest most uh, um, most preferred uh, you can say most preferred selectors or probably a selector with highest priority then the class selector which has the second priority and the tag selector which has the lowest most priority okay so this also you should always remember which one should get applied if you are having conflicting st styling for the single element if you are having conflicting styling for the single element always id selector will take precedence over class selector and class selector takes precedence over tag selector okay fine so this is about selectors now you can combine the selectors as well how you combine the selectors so let's say i am having this uh, span inside the div tag right so div is a kind of container in html and inside div i have a span now i want to apply only styling to this particular span so let's say i have this span with the same id and same class okay now in my css so i'll simply uh, remove it in my css what i am going to do is i am going to apply styling for this sit but i just want to apply the styling for this span only so if i apply using id selector it will apply it here as well if i use using class selector it will apply it here as well i don't want to do that so you can combine the selectors so first what i'll do i select this view using tag selector and then i select this span using id selector so what i can do i can write view and then i can write hash uh, what was the id sid and then i can write color it means this particular id inside div now you can go as long as you want into the hierarchy so you may have another div inside a div you may have a hierarchy and that you may have a span inside that so you can go uh, into that using uh, multiple uh, a multiple 
combinations so this is a combination of selectors so how this is how you can combine the selector now there is another way of combining selectors as well let's say i want to uh apply some styling to this only so uh, what i can do is i can have this class right so that class may not be applied to everywhere but here in our case this class is getting applied to paragraph as well and this class is getting applied to span as well so here uh, i will apply okay we still need to see the output right so i will keep it as it is and we will refresh so you see green is getting applied only to this particular piece of span why because we are using combined selectors now if i want to uh, apply uh, so le le let's say i don't have a class here now i want to apply something to here only so paragraph also having this class and span also having this class and now i don't have anything as a parent and that's why i cannot build this kind of hierarchy which i built in div right so in that case how you can do is you can combine the selector stating a span with having a class so with having means you combine a class with the html element as well so you will say like this span with my class and you will say color as green so this particular uh, if you apply now your paragraph is still blue and your span is getting uh, color as green okay now both why both because this is also green okay so here you can have a kind of uh, okay so this is how you combine the selectors there are various ways of uh, using selectors and we will see it don't worry uh, probably in the next session we'll see more but in today's session we will see some more in specificity as well okay so this is how you use com combination of the selectors okay now uh, so we have covered how we apply the css how where exactly can go the css what is the cascading order how many selectors how many selectors how many types of selectors how you can combine the selectors now there are attribute selectors as well attribute selectors are specific for html elements who are having attributes associated with it so this is my attribute this is also my attribute same way i can select the html element using attribute selectors so these are all major selectors apart from that we have a sub selector kind of stuff where we can use attribute selectors so i can say d where i can say uh, probably let's have a so i'll remove this whole stuff i hope this much is clear i remove uh, this much stuff as well now uh let's say i i want to apply some styling on the span which is having attribute lang is let's say english and i will say color is green so this is called attribute selectors you use uh, square brackets inside that square bracket you mention the attribute and its value what should be the value and now if i have a span here and if i have a length as english and if i put something here this is english language and if i refresh you will see color is applied as green because we are having this particular stuff now uh, there is one more uh, selector which you do not, where you do not need to apply the value so you can write like this also 
you can write uh, like this also so it considers all the spans which are having this art attribute regardless of the value of it so you can have this kind of stuff as well now this was like equality now we can have various uh, regex kind of stuff regular expression kind of stuff where we will say my length should contain word or text uh, uj and i will apply color red it means any span where lang attributes value contains guj this particular styling should be applied so if i have this and copy it and if i write so lang star means lang should contain yeah this is operator so equality is you know another operator is asterisk star that means so first operator is equal right so this all is this this equal yeah. operator we know right this is yes, another operator in css asterisk asterisk equal okay and that stands for asterisk equal means contains contains right what are the other operators like that yes yes we are going to cover it one by one okay sir if i go like this you will be having probably i'm not writing english i will write which right okay now let's copy it again and i will put marathi and now i want something to be ended with so i will which operator i will use i will use dollar equals ended with thi dollar equals means ends with loop okay so we are getting blue color for this particular stuff okay so we have uh, these are called attribute selectors we are having various operator uh, in uh, uh, attribute selector so equal operator is there first thing is you do not, you can you may have a, you may have option not to use operator so in that case all the span which will be having this particular uh, value uh, which particular attribute this particular attribute will be having this color let's say black is default so this is a default color so if i apply a span without uh, any attribute value then the default color will be applied so let's say i have this attribute and now if i refresh it you will see that the black color is getting applied so you can have none of the operator or you can have equal operator or you can have asterisk equal operator asterisk equal means contains dollar equals means ends with now same way if i want to have a kind of uh, um, there are other equality operator one is length then you have asterisk equals this is basically starts with so i have this i will copy it sorry i will paste it here i will say he blue and my uh, heb is what is the value starts with so i will say heb and i will apply color as yellow and now if i go here i will apply blue and if i go here so you are getting this value right so yellow so uh, this caret means starts with dollar means ends with asterisk equals means contains now same way you have other operator as well called lang 
and then you have uh, tilt equals tilt equals means the entire world should be there into um, attribute value that world may be spaces separated but it should be entirely there so when i say when i say here let's say german it means this german word should be there as a um, attribute value somewhere so i can have like this also this will also work sorry i will say german and i will apply some css where i will say color is now gray okay so this will also work because the word itself is there the entire word now if you may have other words as well let's say uh, spanish then also this is what this will work now the order also doesn't matter so you may have first spanish and then german so in in, in nutshell what it says is a particular word should be there in that value regardless of what order it has okay but contains is not there so if i remove the space and if i try now you will see the default color is getting applied right so it's 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 not contains it is basically the entire word should be there separated by spaces if you have more words as well so that is what is uh, tilt sign is for same way you have a dash but in the html uh, it's, uh, sorry for interrupting in the html yeah. you do not fill no sorry it's not the equal in the HTML for uh, for this German, you did not have the tilde sign. You just had the equal to. If you go to the HTML. Yeah, yeah. HTML, HTML. We will not uh, apply all this, right? HTML because we are checking the value here and not here. Here we are assigning values. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So uh, you may have a lang and then pipe equal. Pipe equal probably Russian, and you have a color as let's say uh, purple. I don't know whether it will work. Purple. I don't know whether it is recognized or not. But what is pipe equal means? Pipe equal means you should have that particular value as the starting word. Okay has to be starting word okay so this is a purple color it has to be a starting word or other words also can be there but that has to be separated by dash so this will also work but if you change the order so if you put this russian in the second place this will not work you will see the black color is getting applied so pipe equals means the value should be the first value and if you are having multiple values it has to be separated by dash so these are called attribute selectors there are these many attribute selectors um, and you can use you can select your elements using attribute selectors as well okay so these are all attribute selectors which are mentioned here uh, we are running out of time so i will just keep this and uh, now uh, the comes the important part which is the box model so every uh, html element is a box consider every html element as a box in uh, your uh, page now that that box has definitely uh, width height border size as well so it has what so box has what 
it has a width right it has height correct it has a border value as well border value means how thick the border is so it depends on how thick your border is and it will be added into width and then it can have a padding it can have margin so just don't go in padding and margin at this point just understand that it can have width height and border value so if i create a div let's say uh, i have a uh, i i have a id box view box i have width of that as 200 pixels pixels is represented by px in scss height is uh, again 200 px and i will say background color is green opacity is basically uh, as word suggests right it is how transparent your box is so i will say uh, the transparency should be 60 percent uh, it should be 60 it should be 60 percent transparent and now I will create one new tag and I will apply class. Uh, I have a, I created class or ID. Okay, ID is there. So what I do, I will create ID with view box. Right? So if I go in our page, so this is our div tag. Okay, so this is our box. Now if I uh, include the border size, Border color is blue and border is let's say 40 px. Then, when you go and see this box, uh, sorry, what is the problem? You need to mention the pattern as well. So you see your box became too big because you have 40 pixels of border and then the actual uh, box. So what I'm trying to say is your box in, in CSS, in HTML, your box consisting of your actual width, height plus the border size as well. Okay, so at this point of time, just understand that in HTML, every element is a box element and every box has width, height, if at all uh, defined. If not, then default, whatever the, based on the content, uh, you have a default height and width, right? Because in paragraph, you don't know what is width and height. So based on the content, uh, you have width and height of it. Now, for this particular box, I have mentioned explicitly, explicitly I have mentioned width and height. So this box is having width and height. Along with that, I have a border as well. So that border is getting added into the width and height as well. So your actual width and height becomes 240 and not 200 because I have a border size of 40. Now, let's take this concept and let's understand the padding and margin. Padding and margin are very much uh, useful in uh, styling and align, aligning the uh, HTML elements. So there are um, concept of padding and margin. Okay. So for that, you need to understand uh, one thing. Before we go here, uh, let's understand the positioning. positioning of the element okay so at this point of time you are saying this div is placed here because it's the default uh, positioning of html elements it is um, uh, in line as and when if it is uh, span is there then there is no line break paragraph is there then there is a line break uh, div elements are vertically stacked so this is a default behavior which uh, HTML CSS is having right if you want to change it you can actually write uh, use position attribute okay so let's uh, comment this view tag and let's create a small uh, probably let's have this view tag only no need to remove it 
So what I'll do is I'll create, uh, I'll change the ID. So I will say div box one, and now I will copy paste this styling. I will apply width is okay. Border I will make little bit small, one px solid, and the color also I will keep it as blue. You can even uh, apply the radius as well. You you can apply border radius to make it little bit uh, curvy. Okay, fine. So uh, I'm not applying radius at this point. So this is div box one in my HTML. Also, I have created div box one. Now I want to position. So what is the default position? Let's see what is the default position of this box. This is the default position of this box. Now I want to position somewhere here or somewhere here or somewhere here. How I can do it in CSS? So there is a position attribute available in uh, CSS. So there are four types of position. One is static, another is absolute, third one is fixed, and the fourth one is relative. Static is default. So at this point of time, already the position is static. So even if you mention position as static, there will be no difference because static is the default. Now, when I say uh, position relative, what it means is now I can say what should be the place from top, what should be the place from left, what should be the place from right, and what should be the place from bottom. So once you mention the position, now you have the flexibility of mentioning the pixels where you will actually put your box. But we need to understand what is relative and what is absolute. So I think it's very uh, understandable by the word. Relative means relative. So when I say top 100 px, it means it will leave the space of 100 px from top and it will leave the space of 100 px from left. Right and bottom doesn't uh, make difference because we have we haven't have that much big box. So right and bottom uh, are most of the time is not useful in case your element is not anywhere around to right side or bottom side. So I'm not uh, playing with right and bottom at this point. Now when I refresh it, you will see the box has been moved here. So this is a top 100 px and this is the left 100 px. Now you see this 100 px is more than this. Why? Because the position is relative. So when we say relative, there should be answer of relative to what? Right? When we say position, position relative, there should be answer of relative to what? Relative to its actual position. Position relative means relative to its actual position. So if I make it again static, this is its actual position. Relative to that, hundred sign. Okay. So it starts from this pixel. It will leave the space of 100 px. It will start from this pixel and it will leave the space of 100 px from left. It's, it means it's relative to its original position. So whatever the difference you will make in the position, it will be relative to its existing position or its default position. You are understanding this? Right? So position relative means what should be this particular div, uh, what should be the position of this particular div relative to its default position. This is default position. I want 100 pixels from this default position, 100 pixels left from this default position. So as soon as I make it rel relative, it will be 100 pixels from this line and left also from this line only. 
now you can mention minus as well minus means it will actually go inside that so this is top 100 px means leave the space of 100 px if you say minus 10 px it will be you see it's going inside that if you see it in a better way it's going inside right it's going uh, inside the overlapping the other component other HTML elements. So you can mention minus as well. And this way you can create the overlapping components. We will see how you can create it. So this is how you create position relative. Now what is absolute? Now I think you should understand what is absolute. Absolute means corresponding to your browser window. Absolute position starts from here, this point. Relative position starts from its default position. Absolute position actual position of the it starts from actual position of the window so when i say this and if i refresh it if i save it I refresh it the left should not be any difference because uh, there was no component in the left side but you will see the difference in top so you see it has been moved inside the uh, taskbar itself because it's absolute position, absolute to your browser window. So when I say it plus 100 pixels, you will see a little bit. Now you will see this space and this space is equivalent. Why? Because it's absolute to this position. Whereas relative was relative to its default position. So this way you can position your element HTML element into your page you can position it everywhere wherever you want okay now so we understood relative we understood static we understood uh, absolute fixed I think by name itself you should be able to understand it when I say fixed what should be done this position will be fixed so if I have it absolute what will happen is let's say I am having a paragraph sample paragraph. you will see what I'm doing actually so I'm creating a content which will generate the scroll in my page Okay, so I have created this many content. If I refresh it, you see uh, there are so many paragraphs available and I have a scroll also. Okay. Now when I scroll this page, you see my box is also moving up. Right? My box is also moving up. But if you want your box to be placed regardless of uh, scrolling, you want your box to be placed at this place itself what you can do is you can create a position fixed and then when you refresh it when you scroll you see your paragraph is getting scrolled but that particular box is fixed so as name suggests the position of this box is fixed okay so this is position static which is default Position relative means relative to the default positioning. Default positioning means if we would have not done anything where this particular box would have been placed. So that's a default position. Absolute means absolute to your windows starting leftmost bottom or left, left topmost corner. That's absolute position. And then the fixed. Fixed is as name suggests, it is fixed inside the browser window. Whether you scroll, don't scroll, that position of that particular HTML element will remain there itself. So it's a position. Okay, now let's understand padding and margin. Okay, so I'll remove this unnecessary content. Okay. Let's understand uh, padding and margin. So I will remove this background color actually because I don't need it. I, I will have problem if I have this background color to explaining uh, padding and margin. Okay, so this is uh, even I don't have uh, 
से ओके सो दिस इज माय ड्यू बॉक्स नाउ लेट्स है आई हैव अनदर ड्यू बॉक्स or uh, let me explain it this way okay so i have this div box okay inside that i have so i will remove this position itself i don't need this at all i want to explain you um so this is a default uh, position of y what's the problem i don't need uh, oh sorry i mistakenly created uh, okay fine so i have a, a div box uh, placed at its default position now now let me place another div inside this and i will say a uh, class id is div box 2 okay so when i say div box 2 uh, again uh, the border color i will uh, make it little bit different green so that you can understand the overlapping is the problem here also oh, here and what is the problem here okay i missed one and that i will change the size to explain you in bit detail so i will make it 150 uh, 150 okay so you see i have one box which is of border blue and i have another box which is of color green inside that now what is padding and what is margin okay padding means leaving the space inside your box leaving space leaving some space whatever the uh, space you mention leaving that much of space inside the box inside the box so if i mention padding in this box 1 and i say padding left should be 15 pixel it means your left side leave some in inside your box when you put something inside your box keep 15 pixels left on the left side okay so you have a box assume you have a box of width 200 pixels height 200 pixels okay you are putting something inside that box so when we say padding left it means it's saying leave some 15 pixels space on the left side when you put something inside it so when i refresh it uh what is the problem it's not showing that uh, i will actually check the problem so padding is leaving space inside the box uh we will see the margin as well what is the meaning of margin but i will first correct this particular piece of code uh, is it because of the comment i don't think so the box one i have the box one the box two right upside oh, yeah now it worked i don't know 
or what was the problem uh, so you see here on the left side we have put the space of 15 px so just to make it more clear let's put 25 px you see now you must have observed one thing as long as we are increasing our padding left this bo box size is getting increased so till this point our box size was width height plus border width but now it includes your padding as well so your box size when you have a padding it includes padding as well okay so padding means so you can have padding left padding right padding top and padding bottom you can mention padding top as well that's a top also 25 pixels so you will leave the space of 25 pixels when you put something inside this box so again 25 pixels here as well you have put the space and it has increased the height of your box the parent box so this is called padding padding left padding top padding right padding bottom you can based on the position of your uh, html element you can play around with padding now the margin so margin is almost similar to padding the only difference is margin says when i say margin left 15 pixels it means leave the space of 15 pixels outside the box and not inside the box okay so when i apply margin to here you will see this particular blue box will leave some space before it actually gets displayed onto the screen so if i have margin 25 pixels margin left 25 pixels you will see that at this point of time it is here right now it will leave the space outside the box so you see 25 pixel has been put here as a space so margin doesn't change width height of your box padding does change the width and height of your box because padding actually leaves space inside your box and the size becomes that much the size gets increased by that much when you leave the space inside when you leave the space outside you do not need to increase the size of the box so margin is leaving space outside the box padding means leaving space inside the box so if you have a hierarchical in html elements and if you play around with padding and margin just remember padding is leaving space inside and margin means leaving space outside padding gets added into your width and height of the box margin doesn't get added because margin is always outside the box so when you put a margin uh, onto your html element it means some of the space will be left before the actual draw of that box starts so that's why we are having this many of left 25 pixels right we have left uh, 25 pixel here so that is padding and margin very simple stuff um, only difference is margin outside the box padding means inside the box that's it now uh, going to there are a few stuff so properties i think these are all properties we are already covering uh, some of the properties we have already covered as well so you can read more properties. there are lots of properties uh, which for which you can prepare the styling so i will not go in the properties margin we have covered uh, links i will cover uh, in the next session position also we have covered okay now the specificity so uh, this links i am not covering because it's a part of pseudo classes and pseudo classes i am going to cover in the next session okay so we will speak about this uh, uh, in the next session so position you know now padding margin you know now the specificity so what is specificity specificity means if you have a conflicting styling for your html element if you are having conflicting styling means uh, multiple styling for that particular element what should be applied what should be applied to your uh, to your html element okay 
so for to understand that you need to understand the cascading order we already spoke about cascading order id selector has the highest priority then the class selector and then the tag selector so what you do is let's say i have a p tag let's say i am having a div tag uh with id let's say d my d inside that i am having a p tag with having a class as let's say my p class and i am having this simple paragraph okay so i am having this much and i want to apply some styling um i will pop comment it out because i don't need that box now okay now i want this to be displayed with some styling so how i can do the styling i can simply say my p class right i can simply say my p class and i will say color green so when i go uh, in the browser your paragraph is in green so it's simple but if you have p color green or let's say color red then you may have multiple selectors so id my div so you may have inside my div p color blue right so if you have this many of combination so uh, if you have my p class inside the div tag so let's say div inside that my p class color red or purple so it applies to your p tag only right all this stuff is getting applied to your p tag only now how we can understand which one will be applied so most of the time you will not write css which is conflicting conflicting means you have multiple style which selects a single same element only so in this case i am selecting single element only right here also i can write another div uh or probably um okay let's understand from this only so now what you need to do is to understand which one which style will be applied you need to give some value to your id selector tag selector and class selector so assume you can give any value okay to understand specificity you can give any value so for uh, for easy understanding id selector because it's having highest priority i will give 30 tag selector uh class selector is having second priority so i will give 20 this the value okay numeric value and tag selector i will give 10 now you need to see which all are selectors getting applied and then you need to total it so here i have class selector the specificity of this is 20 right specificity specificity is nothing but total of all the selectors and the value whichever you can have three you can have point something it's 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 for understanding it's a theory it's a theory so you don't uh, define this into somewhere you just uh, for understanding you create this kind of values to understand which style will apply so style will apply the particular style which will be applied based on the specificity value so whichever the style having higher specificity value will be applied so we have conflicting styling for same element so now we are identifying what is the specificity and whichever the styling having highest specificity will be applied so this particular stuff having specificity 20 why because it's having only class selector now here i have only tag selector so 10 here i have id selector as well as tag selector so it means my specificity will be id 30 and tag 10 so my specificity will be 40 here i have a tag selector and a class selector so here my specificity will be 
10 plus 20 will be 30. Okay, so based on our calculation, color blue should be applied because it is having higher specificity. So when I go here, you will see the blue color. We are having all conflicting styling, right? But we don't know which one apply. Highest specificity value styling will always be applied if you are having conflicting styling for the same element. How you can define the how you can define the specificity? You give some value to ID selector, tag selector, and class selector. ID selector is a highest priority, so you will give highest value to ID selector, then the class selector, and then the tag selector. And you need to add upon all the uh, values based on what are the selectors you have used in your styling. Okay. So because this particular styling has the highest specificity, this particular styling is getting applied. This is called specificity. There is no calculation. There is no uh, thing of defining specificity. No, it's a theory. And you should not write conflicting styling. And if you are getting conflicting styling and if you see that, okay, I am applying, I'm trying to apply purple color, but blue color is coming check for conflicting styling and then identify the specificity that purple color would be having higher specificity and that's why it is getting applied. So it is useful in case you are having conflicting styling for the single element for the same element that is called specificity. Okay, media queries, the last part. Uh, media queries are useful uh, in case you want to build your responsive design. So responsive design means you open your website in laptop, it gets displayed properly. But when you open your website into mobile, you need to scroll horizontally a lot, right? You need to scroll horizontally a lot. So what uh, nowadays people prefer is responsive design. Responsive design means you have some um, box which will be a displayed of 500 pixels on laptop, but you want that box to be of 200 pixels on mobile. How you can achieve it? You can achieve it through media queries. So media queries are uh, styling only, but that styling will apply if the query result is true. If your media query result is true, then only that styling will be applied. So how we write media queries? We write media queries using at the red media screen and you mention the screen size. So I will say max width is equal to 500 px. And then inside this, I will write P color blue. Okay. Now what it means? It means as and when my screen size goes uh, below to 500 pixels, apply this styling because my max width is 500 pixels, right? So if my screen size is 498, this query will be true because this query will be applied only till max width 500 pixels. So 498 comes inside this and that's why your paragraph color will be applied as blue. So now if I check here in our browser, your P color, okay, I will make it uh, red, purple, uh, I haven't used, uh, I haven't used, So here, if you see my paragraph color is blue at this point of time. But as soon as I uh, go, little, oh, okay, because because of the specificity, right? So I will actually uh, remove this. Or probably I will comment it out. Okay. Now if I see max width 500 pixels, oh come on, what's the problem, max width uh, no I think like this only, oh 
I need to see the syntax. Come on. Yeah, it's same. Uh, but why it's not applying? Uh, just give me a second. I will uh, clear the problem. Color gray. Any problem in gray? Uh, I make it. Come on, it's not getting applied. The reason I don't know. Uh, we take a sample media query and here uh, color is applying as blue why color oh come on i have this yeah so you see so let's have one styling so i have this p as color as purple purple and the default p color is uh, let's say green So this is green. Now, as soon as your screen sizes go below 500, the color is getting changed. This is called media queries. Media queries are applied as and when your query result is true. And then what are the styling you make that will be applied. Media queries are always useful in building the responsive design. So you want to make a font size smaller in mobile screen, right? So you can write a media query. You can write maximum width 500 pixel, and you can make you can make font sizes smaller. Color maybe more. Uh, uh, probably in mobile you may select another color. In laptop you may select another color. Size also you may change as and when uh, you uh, open your website in uh, mobile. Now this media query may help any condition you want so max width find or probably you may have range as well min width 500 pixels and max width 700 pixels so screen which are having width that between 500 to 700 only then this color will be applied otherwise the normal color will be applied so if i refresh it now you see green color is getting applied because now my screen size is not of minimum width 500 pixels so as soon as i go in 500 pixels the color is becoming gray now as soon as i go beyond 700 pixels uh, you will see the color is again becoming green right so you can write this many uh, this the, you can write as many conditions as you want but it will always be on width Okay, most of the time it will not be on height. Height nobody cares. In responsive design, you cares about uh, width. So this is how you write media queries. Applying some styling only if the screen size is this much. For that reason, you write media queries using at the rate media screen and then giving the condition minimum width maximum width or the combination of it. Is this the okay. principle of bootstrap frameworks like bootstrap? Yes, bootstrap uses this uh, media queries a lot. Okay. So uh, that's it. That's it uh, for today. You can, uh, we are already running out of time, but uh, still, if you are having any questions, so what we understood today, we understood uh, selectors, how many selectors are there. Then we understood uh, combining those selectors. We understood attribute selectors as well. Then we checked what is positioning of the element. Then we checked how we can uh, uh, do padding and margin when you have uh, div elements or any HTML elements in hierarchical manner uh, then we understood uh, specificity so when specificity is checked and when it is useful how we can calculate specificity and then we understood the media queries right
so this much thing we covered today uh, pseudo classes is what we are going to cover in tomorrow's session which i haven't covered in today's session okay so any questions from this was it clear was the was it useful okay so uh, thanks a lot guys uh, have a nice rest of the day bye bye